I'm getting ready to do something too. I'm running for president. Americans have fought uh, their way back. Well, that is how Hillary Clinton announced to the nation that she's running for president again. The former Secretary of State released that video online, but she's not the only presidential hopeful using social media to break the news. Here's Ted Cruz. It's a time for truth, a time to rise to the challenge, just as Americans have always done. I believe in America and her people, and I believe we can stand up and restore our promise. It's going to take a new generation of courageous conservatives to help make America great again. And I'm ready to stand with you to lead the fight. All right, and the other two Republicans running so far are Senators Marco Rubio and Rand Paul. And here to talk about uh, the use of social media, that new trend, well, it seems to be becoming a newer trend. We have KUSI political analyst John Dady. And good morning, John. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, so social media, it seems like this is what everybody does now. Turns to social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, to make an announcement uh, to... Whether it's uh, you know that they're running for president or any sort of announcement that they that the campaign has. Well, like uh, many other things we've seen in the last campaign cycles over the past decade, things keep increasing. So clearly, social media has increased, and you can't ignore it anymore. You have to address it. And keep in mind, it really has two great outcomes of it. A lot of people looked at the announcements on Twitter, on Facebook, et cetera. But then again, still the old-fashioned way. The standard media still covered the Twitter announcement, et cetera. So they really got two bites at the apple. Two bites at the apple. That's interesting. But that's not all it's going to take. I mean, there's so many other things you can't ignore, oh, I that's, imagine. That's absolutely. And here's the interesting thing with, so far, three declared candidates, two Republicans and one Democrat, mm -hmm. as far as a different style. The two Republicans kind of did it the old-fashioned way. It worked for them. They had good rollouts. But you get a lot of your supporters around to say, to chat, to clap when you say you're sure. announcing. Hillary, by doing it on, you know, the video, et cetera, very smart for a couple ways. She was addressing the millennials, mm -hmm. very smart, but also by doing it on video, she could control the message. And she didn't get the questions that Rian Paul got afterwards, et cetera. Sure. And, so she's very, and then doing a very small rollout like she's doing instead of the big bus tour, very smart. That was smart because reporters didn't have an opportunity to ask Hillary Clinton much. Well, the joke on the media was you saw the reporters running after the little mini yeah, band yeah, yeah. of Hillary's. Okay, so I want to ask you about millennials because, uh, you know, interesting poll out that showed uh, perhaps you need to win over the millennials uh, to, to land president. The, to land the presidential race. Millennials are going to be very important, but that particular poll, there was a lot of problems with it. For example, they uh, they asked the Republicans the Republican uh, question, Democrats the Democrat questions, but a third of millennials are independent voters, so they weren't included. So that really skewed uh, the outcome uh, of that, with that, without a doubt. But clearly, the millennials, they're going to be very important. They have, as I said, increased over the last couple of election cycles. However, the key is, like any demographics, it's not who they support, it's will they actually get out to vote. So the if real they don't issue, go to the poll, it doesn't count. The real issue is whether Absolutely. or not these millennials will go out and vote and make a difference, right, in the outcome. So what are your thoughts? We have Hillary Clinton. Um, who else do you see on the Democratic side that could be a good, I mean, there, it seems like there's no other potential candidate that could actually face off with her. Well, that, that's true. However, there's at least a half a dozen, if not a dozen, Democratic candidates that are just waiting for the opportunity for her to implode, for some of these questions about some of her activities to really get to a point where it hurts the campaign. Keep in mind, at this time, in 2007, nobody heard of Barack Obama. Sure. Okay, so everybody, everybody was saying the exact same thing we say now that Hillary has a nomination. So we, we just don't know. But, you know, you got Jim Webb, a former senator out there. Of course, if Hillary implodes, Joe Biden would jump in right away. Mm. Uh, Andrew Cuomo from New York is a mm -hmm. very big name. So there's a lot of Democrats out there. But here's an interesting thing, because we're talking about millennials. I don't know how this is going to play into it, but think about this for a second. If Hillary Clinton becomes president of the United States and gets sworn in in January 20th of 2017, she will be the second oldest president in the history of our country. She doesn't look that old. She's very energetic. But Ronald Reagan was the oldest. She's only a couple months behind him wow, as far as uh, if factoid. she actually gets there. That's an interesting little factoid there. You know, I want to take this time to ask you on the Republican side. I know that um, Jeb Bush hasn't made an official announcement yet. But when you take Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio, I was reading an article recently about 
you know, how they, th their, their policies, they, they, they seem very similar in a lot of the things that, that they believe. What are your thoughts between the two? Well, you see that, actually, I'll broaden that and say you see that a lot in the primaries for both parties that uh, because of the philosophical, a lot of the candidates agree. Now, here's what, the, here's what the sand trap is. When you go through a primary, and in the Republican side will probably might have a dozen candidates, which what will happen is in the primary, they're sniping at each other. Mm -hmm. Then there becomes one nominee, of course, and everybody wants to support that nominee. However, the other party opponent will go back and bring up the comments all his colleagues said, mm -hmm. his or her colleagues said. And so that's the problem uh, when, when you have candidates. But yeah, clearly one thing Jeb Bush is trying to paint um, that a lot of people disagree and some agree is whether or not he's a true conservative. You'll hear that phrase a lot. A lot of people consider Rand Paul a very conservative, and he is one of the, of all of the candidates, it's both Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, that are the darlings of the Tea Party. Ah, very interesting. Thank you so much for coming on good and chatting you. with us. It's very good to see you. Interesting conversation, too, with the uh, social media and that whole trend. So it thank you. It will be increasing. Yeah, and it will be increasing. That is for sure. Thank you so much, John.